All right, guys, welcome back to uh, On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about polygons uh, and my favorite tool, uh, splines. So uh, to get started, like we always do, we're going to start with a sketch. Uh, click the sketch button. Let's start on the top plane. Make sure we click a plane. Letter P to hide our planes. Letter N to normalize our view. Um, we're going to start with some construction lines. Remember from the last video, if I start with a uh, tool and I press the letter Q, I can click it and it'll become a construction line. So we'll just go ahead and start here. Um, do a line vertically and we'll do another one across the origin horizontally. Doesn't matter how long they are, we're just using them for um, some of the things we're going to do today. Um, so to start with, our polygons live right next to our arcs, which we talked about last week. Um, we're going to start with our inscribed polygon and our circumscribed polygon. So the difference between the two, um, you'll see here in a second. But if you look at the definition, it says an inscribed polygon is a polygon defined on an inscribed circle, meaning that the circle is inside of whatever shape you're going to make and a circumscribed polygon is the opposite of that so the circle lives on the outside of the shape that you're going to make so um, for this example let's start with a pentagon five sides so we're going to do an inscribed polygon we're going to start at our origin and i'm just going to drag out and you'll notice that i have a circle on the inside of my polygon so this is inscribed inside, circle is inside of my polygon. Um, if I want my points facing up, I orient to the right. If I want a flat side up, I orient up and down. So pay attention to that. Notice I'm following that, that vertical uh, construction line. If I want a flat top, if I want a pointed top, I follow the horizontal line so vertical for flat horizontal for a uh, point on the top so we're going to go flat on the top um, and i said i wanted to do a, a pentagon five sides and if you notice i only i have six sides right now so i'm just going to click on here and the very next click i do you'll see two arrows um, right now it's on six that's probably your most common polygon you know bolt heads are six-sided um, a lot of things we do you know, we use bolts and, and things probably more often than anything else. So six sides is kind of where we want to start. But maybe I only want five, so I'll go down a little bit further. Maybe I want a square, which we already used a square. I wouldn't use a polygon, an inscribed polygon feature to draw a square. If you want a triangle, some of you guys might have been drawing triangles already. This is an easier way to get it. Um, and notice I can't go past three because anything under three isn't a polygon. But the higher I go up, if I just keep moving my mouse up, five, six, seven octagon all the way up i don't remember how high it goes i want to say it's like 50 something but at that point you're pretty much just drawing a circle uh, if you're doing things relatively small so like i said we're going to do a pentagon i'm going to click and the very next click opens up my text box and it asks me what i want that diameter of that circle to be so um for this argument we did five sides let's do five inches and we'll press enter on my keyboard and I have a nice five-sided shape with a five-inch circle in the center. So let's say I wanted this to be four inches or four, four uh, sides. I can double-click that 5x, change it to four, and now it's a square. Double-click that, change it to 10. Now I have 10 sides. Double-click it, change it back to our five, and we're back at our five sides. Okay. If I need to change the size, I do the same thing but on my diameter. And that's pretty much how a polygon works. So pr fairly simple. Um, instead of drawing five lines, or you know, if you're doing a 20 sided shape, drawing 20 lines, a couple less clicks, actually a, a lot less clicks, and this will help you get the shapes you need. So let's do that same thing, but we're gonna do it this time with a circumscribed polygon. So same center point at that origin. I still want my point up. So I'm going to click here, but this time I'm going to have five. Actually, I did that the wrong way. I'm going to go center point. We're going to go out, we're going to flat top, and I'm going to go to five sides this time. So now if we look, I will make this a seven 
it's asking me my diameter seven. I want that to be five. And we can see that one of my polygons is a lot smaller than the other because that those two circles are still the same size, but one has a five inch circle inside of it. And one has a five inch circle on the outside touching all of those points. So if we were to do a circle around these points, I'll do a three point circle really quick and we'll get the measurement of that. You would see that it's actually 6.18 inches on the outside of that five inch inscribed polygon circle. So don't get caught up in the vocabulary. Just know if you want to draw polygons, these are the quickest way to do it. If you want it to be a certain size, um, go about picking which one you need accordingly. But I'll show you the real quick trick right here. Um, actually, I want to save my construction line. So we'll delete only those. I'm going to pick either polygon, inscribed, circumscribed. I'm going to start from that center. I'm going to go out to the side. I'm going to make, we'll do six sides this time. And I'm not going to give it a measurement. Okay. I know that from the tip of my hexagon to the bottom of my hexagon, I know that it needs to be four inches. So I can do that, right? Maybe I need to, I know this measurement, I can give it from side to side. Okay. So that's the quicker way to do it. If you want to go through the motions of how it asks you to do it, it's already going to give you that. I feel like if you learn the process of that tool, that'll help you tremendously. So that's pretty much it for poly. So now we are going to move into our spline tools. So under spline, we have spline, we have bezier. It's a fancy, fancy word. And I know everybody wants to say bezier. Um, and then spline control point. Spline is going to be your one you're going to use more often than not if you're doing a lot of art. Um, bezier, bezier is a uh, kind of a more fancy, a lot of math goes into it, like our last video. We talked about the um, rocket science doing wings and, and, you know, like rocket fins and foils and all that stuff. Um, that's probably where you're going to use that, where you know a lot of the measurements. A spline, I feel like, is the unknown where you want to match that shape, but you don't know all the math behind it. Uh, and the bezier is if you do know the, the math behind it. So we're going to start with spline. And the way spline works, you click a point and it looks like you're just drawing lines. And you are at first. But now if I click again at the top of this sketch plane, you'll see that when I move my mouse for that third point, it wants to make me a curve. So yes, something very similar to what you could do with ellipticals and conics and all that stuff, but I'm not doing any math, okay? Why do I want to do this? So now I'm going to click another point and then go from there. So if I need to trace curves and I want and I have some pretty ornate shapes. I can just keep clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. And once I get all the way back to my starting point, I click OK. And now I have a pretty funky polygon, but it matches art that I have existing. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, a couple things to note when you're doing spline. Click and click and click and click. If I press escape on the keyboard, it locks that shape in place. If I click it again, I can pick back up from where I left off and I go to do something else and I click point. Oh no, I lost that point from switching to point from spline to point. I lost that whole arc that I just did. I've had students do a whole art piece and they've traced all kinds of stuff. And then they went to go add or go get the trim tool and they delete their line that they just drew. So every so often I tell them to press the escape key and that allows you to kind of like save essentially some, some lines that you already have going. So we'll throw some splines in here um, and we'll look at this. So if we zoom in, you'll see I have one, two, three, four blue dots and two white dots. Um, those blue dots, if I move those, I'm just moving my shape around. So let's say I is supposed to look like this. I can move it however I need to. And those white dots, are going to be the tangential line. So if I move those, it's where a circle would be or how that line is tangent to the curve that I'm making. So if I turn this even more, you'll see I'll start to get more of a curve shape towards that bottom. If I extend it out. I can manipulate this in a bunch of different ways. Um, 
While we're here, we're going to skip over the Bezier and we're going to go straight to the spline control. If I want to add another point, I can click this spline control point without having to draw a whole new spline. So let's say I needed one more point here and another one in between every point that I made. I can add more points. And then from there, I can go and manipulate those with greater points of articulation. So instead of drawing a whole new spline, go down to that spline control point and add a point on your spline. Whereas if I just use the regular point tool, that point's gonna live there, but it's not gonna really change my geometry. It's just gonna move with the spline. That spline control is gonna move the whole smart spline. Does that make sense? So we're gonna get rid of that. And we'll show you how to do the Bezier. Um, so what happens here is I click same way, start with the line just as before, but now you'll see I have straight line construction lines kind of showing me that I'm attached and how this geometry is being manipulated. So then I just keep clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. Okay. Now if I double click, it's going to stop. And I see my polygon, I see my, my lines going with it, right? What's cool about this is I can add dimensions to these. So I only want this curve to go out 12 inches. And then I want this one to go out five. Well, you'll see it'll start manipulating in the way that uh, I want this to go. So we'll go here. And I want that to be 14, right? So. I can get real precise with it. Like I said, if you're doing stuff to trace art, odds are you're probably not going to know math on it. Um, and you probably don't really need to get too precise with art. If you're doing something and you're tracing the wing of a plane, then yeah, maybe you want to make sure your math is right. So this is where you would do that. Um, one thing I do want to show you with spline, and I'm going to do a whole video on just this alone because this is one thing I use in my class more than anything. Uh, take a look over here at this insert image button. So you're going to go down. Yours might be set up on the insert DXF. If it's there, just drop down to insert image. Go ahead and import an image. So for me, I'm going to import this. Uh, this is the line work I actually got from my uh, tattoo artist. Uh, this is the tattoo I got put on my leg. Uh, go ahead and import your picture. And when you import a picture, it's going to ask you to draw a rectangle of that image. So we're going to go like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the green check mark because I don't really wanna do anything on this sketch just yet. I could scale it up in there, but what I wanna do is draw on another sketch on the same plane, so on the top plane as well. And this is where that spline tool comes in. And I'm gonna start on, uh, we'll start on my hair up at the top. So I'm gonna start a line on the outside of where my hair is. Um, and we're gonna do a spline. And then I'm gonna zoom in and start just clicking points as I go, tracing my logo of the outline of the line work. And you'll see slowly but surely, I will start getting line work for my piece that I wanna either put into 3D printing, I wanna put out on the laser, um, for this one, I actually cut out a metal on our plasma cutter at the school, uh, have it hanging up in the classroom. It looks pretty cool, actually. Um, so as you see, as I zoom out, I start to get some really ornate line work without having to do a whole lot of math, without having to know uh, the conic sections of things and how the, the splines are supposed to be mathematically related. So you can see here. I'm going to get down to about my ear and then I will stop. But I have this smart spline curve. I'm going to press the escape button. I'll hide my first uh, sketch and you'll see I already have some pretty good line work. Now, a lot of nodes, um, but you can see that each one of those are like able to be manipulated. So let's say I messed up and I actually drew my hair out that far, right? I can go through here and just kind of grab it and bring it back to where I need to and then go from there. So something as simple as taking a hand-drawn drawing and bringing it in. I've had people bring me um, 
handwriting before that they wanted me to match to put on and cut out as a sign. Um, we've taken that handwriting and, and leveled it up and made it a little more clean. Um, but like I said, these spline tools, this, this spline tool in particular is probably one of my favorites. Um, like I said, you can pick right back up from where you were at. I'm going to click here and we're just going to skip over uh, so I can show you a finalized like polygon shape once it closes. Let's say we'll just do the upper part of my hair and you'll see that I have the upper part of my logo done and I can always go back and finish the rest and trim stuff up and do that as I need. But just to show you how, how quick and simple that stuff is. So um, let me know if you're watching these. Um, would you rather see our next tool I'm thinking is doing kind of a little bit of everything, some points, some text, all these these features, editing features more than drawing features. Or do you want to see this this spline feature more in depth? So if you if you're watching this, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys are enjoying on shape orientation. I uh, I'm having a blast doing it and I'm hoping that it it, it teaches you guys something. So uh, thanks. Take care.